Harbour cycle allows us to take the enthalpy change of formation of an ionic substance and break it down into all the individual steps. Here we're forming one mole of magnesium oxide from magnesium and oxygen, both in their normal state under standard conditions. So we need one mole of magnesium atoms and half a mole of oxygen molecules. We'll measure all the energy changes from here, so we'll label this energy level as zero. Firstly, we need to separate the magnesium atoms from one another, so that's the enthalpy change of atomization of magnesium. And we'll also need to split the oxygen molecules to get oxygen atoms. Then we'll need to remove the first and then the second outer shell electrons of the magnesium atom to form the Mg2 plus ion. Adding an electron to the outer shell of an oxygen atom releases energy, the electron affinity. But even though adding the second electron completes the outer shell, it takes energy to do this because of the repulsion between the O- ion and the electron. Now we have one mole each of magnesium and oxide ions in the gaseous state, so we can allow them to bond together to form a mole of solid magnesium oxide. That's the lattice enthalpy. All those steps taken together are equivalent to the enthalpy change of formation. This is an example of Hess's law. Now we need to write the values for each energy change. Remember to check if any of the energy changes needs multiplying by a number of moles. So one mole of solid magnesium to one mole of gaseous atoms, that's one lot of delta H A T for magnesium, and so on. I like to keep track of the energy changes of each level as we go around the cycle, so I work out the energy of each level starting from zero and adding the energy changes together as far as I can. Here we need to go around the other way because the next bit is the value we're trying to find. So now we can see that the arrow for the first ionisation energy of magnesium takes us from plus 396 to plus 1133. So we just have to work out how big an increase that is. So that's 735 kilojoules per mole. 